So the next speaker is uh, Dominique Fuhrer from my lab, and she's going to present her uh, PhD project on the PV proteins in paramecium. Please. Um, hi, everybody. Um, before I will tell about the PV proteins, I want to just give you a really quick reminder about the small RNAs involved in genome rearrangement. Um, so the three cells here are representing um, stages through um, development. So it's this um, when the mics are going to meiosis, when the old mic fragmentates, and when the new unlocks are formed. Um, so in, during meiosis, the DNA gets double-stranded transcribed, forming this double-stranded RNA. They are preceded by dicer-like proteins 2 and 3, forming these scan RNAs, we just heard a lot about before. Um, they are then loaded onto PV, and the guiding strand is then transported to the old, from the fragment from the old macronucleus, where they um, bind to homologous sequences on the no-coding RNA, which targets them for degradation. Those, um, I don't, those scan RNAs, which are actually um, arised from IESs, they do not buy, uh, find their homologous sequence, so they are further transported to the unlock and of the new MAC, where they somehow trigger excision of IESs. Um, so the scan RNAs are expressed early during development, are a size of 25 nucleotides, and show a typical U and G signature on the 5' prime end. There is a second class of small RNAs involved in new arrangement, so-called IS RNAs. They appear later during development, are exclusively IS matching, and have the size between 21 till 31 nucleotide. And they show a particular 5 prime signature of UAG and a 3 prime signature of CNAU. So we believe that those scan RNA, uh, IS RNAs are produced from excised IS's then um, proceeds from the dicer-like 5 protein forming the double-stranded IS RNAs. Somehow they are made single-stranded and then target other copies of the same IS for proper complete excision. And my project is about to identify the PV protein interacting with these IS RNAs. So as a small reminder, T cell 2 and 3 produces scan RNAs, bind by PV1 and 9. D cell 5 is producing IES RNAs, and we are wondering in this protein here, it might be possible that PV1 and 9 also interact with the IES RNAs since they are in the right time on the right place. I will park this here just for a reminder while the talk. Um, so in paramecium, we have 14 different PV proteins. They are grouped in three subfamilies, and they are generated in the last two whole genome duplications. They all contain three domains, the past, the mid, and the PV domain. The only so far characterized um, development-specific PVs are PV1 and 9. They are expressed early. They were studied in Eric's lab. Um, and they showed evidences that they are required for the accumulation of scan RNAs since in a knockdown situation, the 25 nucleotide scan RNAs disappear. Plus, we believe that they are involved, uh, they are, the PVs are transporting the scan RNAs from the old to the new macronucleus as you can see here with the GFP, it's first localized in the old max, stays there while fragmentation, and then is further localizing in the new unlocking. But of course, we were interested in the late express PV since we want to find the interaction partner of the late IS RNAs. So candidates for this was the analogs 10 and 11, PV6, PV7, and PV8. We performed a silencing, extracted genomic, a whole genomic DNA uh, post from post gamma cells, and we performed IES retention PCR, but this time we designed IES's flank, um, primers flanking IES's, which are specific for DCL5 IES's. So it means that these IES's have a high retention score only in DCL5, but not in DCL2 and 3. And as you can see, whenever an IES is affected of the DCL5 silencing, it's also affected of the PV10 and 11 silencing, but not in, from the PV1 and 9. And with this, we already had our first hint that possibly the analogs PV10 and 11 are in the same pathway as DCL5. So we continued, of course, big scales. We went through development, extracted um, 
RNA from different time points for northern and small RNA sequencing, and also from post optical cells, we extracted the new max for deep sequencing. Here, just corresponding northern blot to the experiment. So, first the DNA. So, what you see here is a plot which shows um, the correlation of retention scores of the IESs from different silencing. So the blue dots are corresponding to IESs, or representing IESs. So if IES is more towards this side, this means it has a high retention in this knockdown, where if it's more here in this area, it means that it has a high retention in the knockdown of these genes. So we compare here the early dicer and the early PVs, and based on the correlation coefficient of 0.7 and the high density, we can say that they are affecting the same population of IESs, meaning that they are probably also working together. The same is true for the late PVs and the late Dicer. Unlike when we then compare the late Dicer with the early PV and the early PVs with the late Dicer, the correlation coefficient only is 0.3. Then, so in other eukaryotes, the P protein are involved in the silencing of transposomes. So we had a closer look how our silencings are affecting the excision of um, transposomes. And as you can see here, only PV1 and 9 knockdown is affecting the excision of transposomes, but not the knockdown of PV10 and 11. So transposomes need the help of scan RNAs, but do not help, need the help of IS RNAs for proper excision. So then we wanted to see if the small RNAs are actually produced from those transposomes. So as you can see here, this is like all the sardines just concatenated and we mapped the scan RNAs to it. We can see that scan RNAs are produced from um, the sardine transposomes. On the other hand, as you can see here, there are almost no IESs produced from the sardine transposomes, but they are produced from the anchois. Um, here you see the signature of those few reads mapping to the sardine, which clearly suggests that this is like a degradation product or whatever, but for sure not IES RNAs. So going then to the IES, uh, to the small RNA sequencing, here you see the control situation, where we see the 25 nucleotide long scan RNAs appearing early during development and the IES RNAs appearing late during development. In a case of a knockdown of PV1 and 9, we see a 4.5 times decrease of the scan RNAs. And in case of the knockdown of PV10 and 11, we see a 3 times decrease of the IES RNAs. The same you can see here on the gel. We see, um, sorry, it's a little bit annoying. So here you see the scan RNAs disappearing. And if you are generous, you can say maybe you see the IES RNA disappearing here. So then we wanted to see where does PV10 localize And of course, we hope to see them in the new unlock and where the whole ISRNA pathways takes place. I have to tell you here um, that PV10 is one of those proteins which is expressed in the new MEC. So, but we are only able to inject into the old MEC. That's why I had to change the regulatory sequence of the protein I, and we choose DCL5. And indeed, PV10 is localizing into new unlock. But unlike DCL5, it is not forming any false size. So now, after all this, we were really happy, but we really wanted to have like the direct proof that the PV binds to small RNA. So we tagged the PV9 protein with a flag HA tag. We performed an RNA immunoprecipitation. And here you see the Western blot. We decided to take an early time point, 30% of fragmentation, and the late time point, 10% plus six hours. And here you see the corresponding gel, and we were really happy to see that. Because you can clearly see that only 25 nucleotide small RNAs are binding to PV9. Um, of course, we sent this to sequencing, and here is from early and the late time point. And also here it makes clear that it's almost exclusive 25 nucleotide long. So here, this is interesting, and also Eric discussed that before with you, is we normalized to the IS matching reads. And in the later time points, we do see a reduction around 2.5 times. This is somehow corresponding to the model that MAC matching, IS, uh, MAC matching scan RNAs are degraded, but it's still not like a 100% situation. Um, 
So then we went into the sequencing logs of these scan RNAs, and as you can see from early, we clearly see only scan RNAs. There is UNG, 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 almost no free prime signature. In the late, the scan RNAs we get from the late time point, we also see a UNG, UNG, UNG. And the interesting thing is that we have the IES matching. So this means because they are also there, um, IES RNAs are present in the size of 25 nucleotide. And we can, so we see here a little bit, a small tiny A in position two, and the CNAU also just a little bit, which actually really suggests that like, there's really like PV9 binds scan RNA and not IES RNA, or maybe just slightly a little bit. So of course we also did this experiment then with PV10. We also flag edged and we put a flag edge tag on the internal side, we performed the RIP, here you see the Western blot. We decided to take two different late time points, especially because we had it under the control of DCL5, and this is expressed a little bit earlier than PV10. So, and here the corresponding gel to it. And we can clearly see here these bands, or like this bulk of IS RNAs, which are spanning between a little bit lower than 25 and a little bit higher than 29. Unfortunately, we did not get the result yet from the sequencing, but we are quite like, um, we think that it will be fine. <laughs> so and if this, I come into my conclusion. So based on the MAC genomic sequencing, we can tell that PV1 and 9, just like TCL2 and 3, are responsible for the excision of scan RNA-dependent IESs, and the PV10 and 11, just like TCL5, is responsible for the excision of IES RNA-dependent IESs. From the transposome story, we can tell that the transposome for excision needs scan RNA, not IES RNAs, and that there are no IES RNA produced from sardine and ton. Um, from the small RNA sequencing, we can see that the knockdown of PV1 and 9 is reducing the scan RNA population, and the knockdown of 10 and 11 is reducing the population of IES RNAs. Then PV10 goes on the place where it should, it localizes in the new MAC. And from the RIPs, of course, we have not direct proof that PV9 binds scan RNAs, PV10 binds IES RNAs. And with this tool, we are now really looking forward to perform further experiments with all the other PVs, especially I'm interested in the other late ones. And with this, I come to my acknowledgement slide. Um, thank you, the organizer, for letting me speak here, and of course, Marius, the lab, and for your attention. Thank you, Dominique. We have time for a few questions. Yes. Thank you for the very nice talk. Um, one question. Did you already take PV8 for MDPS? <laughs> you mean because it's an analog of 14, right? Oh. No, but I really, really want to, see, like, yeah. No, we did not, and we have to, like, speak about this. <laughs> So when you look at what are the, the smaller, the, the ISs are affected by the late scan RNAs versus the early ones, is there any characteristics of those ISs that distinguish them um, that would allow basically reason why you would need the IES pathways, um, the, the secondary IES RNAs to actually target their elimination? So in general, we can say there are really few of them which only need one especially like only need IS RNAs. And also IS RNAs are only affecting like around like 30%. There is never like a full need of it. I guess it has some, we can see some correlation about like the length, that as long as it is, it's more helps it needs. Let's say it this way. All right, if there's no more question, uh, then we move on to the next speaker. Thank you, Dominique.